I suppose we found our machine. At least, what's left of it. Do you feel anything, Saira? With your gift, I mean. Agreed. Maybe we can even take some small parts of it with us right now. The Order will transport the rest to Ark by Myra. Nothing else possesses that much raw, magical power. to comprehending, like a cosmic force. Energy. It's useless without the Numinos. Yes, found something? Hmm, they look useful. Let's take them to the Chronica. Yes? Hmm, yes, you're right. How is it possible that it moves all by itself? Let's take it with us. Let me see. Hmm, yes. Hmm, yes. I think you're right. Hopefully we didn't miss anything. Let's go talk to Pegast. Now that was quick. So, what did you find? Well, that's not much of a surprise, considering how long it was down here. And as long as we can reconstruct it, that's alright. I sent some of my men back to Ark. We'll request a caravan to get all the parts back to the temple, and see what we can do from there. Let's just hope it really will help us against this cleansing, whatever it is. As much as I admire Pyrean technology, I don't like the idea of putting our lives in the hands of it. Hmm. Let me see. Narman, Bruma, Vivius, Myrokis, Tamayarin. Hmm. Interesting. Truly interesting. What? Seems that this machine was only some kind of prototype. The real one that Pyrians were working on must be somewhere else. Plus, there's also a name for it. The Pyrians called it the Beacon. Hmm. That's poetic. Indeed. <sighs> Well then, it seems like you and your visions have once again saved the day, Prophetess. There's a lot for us to do now. If you've taken care of your business here, I suggest you head back to Ark and report to Old Aranthiel. What do you think, Saira? Do you want to leave now, or stay a little longer? Good. There you are. Pegast's mages have already told the Grand Master about our find, and they're waiting for us in the Emporium. Let's go. All that I am saying is that there are more efficient ways to battle this red madness. And heathen machines atop the Sun Temple are the last thing that will calm the townsfolk. 
Maybe. But if this heathen machine is what the Pyreans used to combat the cycle, I want it near. Even if it turns out to be useless, only a fool turns down a chance. Sharim, how long will the reconstruction take? Well, that depends on how many Pyrian mechanics you have on hand that can help us decipher these plans. Just think for once, Aranthiel. How are we supposed to give you an estimation if we don't even know what the finished machine is supposed to look like? We will get to work right away, Grandmaster. But in any case, we're going to need a lot of steel. Three and crystals. You will get them. Now get to work. Now, if it isn't You the did prodigy, excellent work. Well... We will reconstruct this machine, no matter the price. With a beacon and the sigiled stone, we now have both a sword and shield against these high ones. That is more than I had hoped for. However, there has also been a disquieting development. I have called in a conclave, and it will take place in a day. Come back then, and use the time to rest. Prophetess. Yes? Walk blessed? Sure. Where to? from where are you from who sent you what do you want blah 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 the usual i can't just let everyone walk into duneville <sighs> this my dame is what you call an entrance the actual duneville is below our feet in a cavern who the heck are you huh. wait a second you're an outlander aren't you that explains a lot Sailors, miners, vagabonds, anyone who got of those snobs remark, I guess. Also, Duneville doesn't have that many residents. Most of them are either just passing through with daytalers who work here for a season. I figured that much already. Tell me what brings you here and maybe I'll let you in. All right, fine, you can pass, but do yourself a favor and respect the rules, or your ass will be out in the dunes faster than you can count to three. <laughs> of course it does, with some minor adjustments. Listen, don't mention it.
can do about the mast? <laughs> nah, what could he say? We don't have enough coin to fix it out anyway. Lander. Shit. He was stupid. What? Really? I can't believe we were stupid enough to sail right into it. <laughs> Why stupid? I mean, even old Charlie said he'd be safe. Why? Because he didn't get his bellyache? Don't tell me you believe that bullshit. <laughs> well. I won't repeat myself. Sod off. I will not. I paid a fortune to act here, and you will tell me what has happened. Or Yes. Huh? That sure thing.
Walk blessed. Yes, my lady. We're sure, where to? Yes? <laughs> Madame? An outlander. What are you doing in this part of the city? Shouldn't you be... I don't know, somewhere else? My damn. Walk blessed. Saira, good to see you. Do you need anything? Mm, that's... convenient, actually. I think I still owe you an explanation. <sighs> Yes, but let's talk sense. somewhere else. Come on. So, sorry for all the secrecy. I just didn't want anyone else to listen in. Well, that moment when I neutralized the leader of the bandits in old Dothalgrad. I'm sure you noticed that I was different then. Upset. You choose your words carefully, Saira. I appreciate that. I'll make this quick. There is something about me that you don't know. That no one knows, actually. Do you remember what I told you in the Curarium about the destroyed village? Well, I... I wasn't entirely honest with you. Not all of it, no, and it's true that I don't know how I ended up there. But I remembered something just before I regained consciousness. A feeling, coupled with an image. It's hard to describe, because it didn't last very long, but... <sighs> I saw myself, but I was somehow above the rooftops, as if I flew. Below me, I saw all the chaos. The dead, the fire, the devastated houses, and I somehow felt... hot, but from inside, as if my blood was boiling. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? I'm sorry, but 
I don't know how to describe it better than that. Nothing. I woke up, and from there things happened just as I've already told you. In that memory, when I saw all those dead bodies and all that destruction, I felt... satisfaction. Pleasure. As if all that suffering, all that pain, was the most exhilarating thing I'd ever seen. Well, I didn't know what to make of that memory myself for quite a long time. There is something inside my head, Saira. Some kind of second soul, an entity. Most of the time it sleeps, but there are situations in which it wakes up. Mostly when something atrocious happens or has happened. Blood, pain, death. Whenever I'm confronted with these kinds of things, it tries to... I don't know how to put it. Tries to take control of me, and then things like Alt to Thulgrad happen. It's never managed to completely take me over, and it hasn't gotten as far as it did in Alt Thulgrad for a long, long time now. But that memory from the village, I think that is what happens when I let myself go completely. Yes, it is immense. I don't even want to think about what would happen if I were to give in completely. If that name seems fitting to you, then yes. If it helps you, think of it as some kind of temptation. One that's just waiting for the moment when I am too weak to contain it. I figure. Listen, what happened in old Dothalgrad? I never should have let it come to that. But that moment when he charged me, the blood on his sword, I just couldn't contain it. And when I gave in, when I hacked him into pieces, I simply felt so... Thrilled. Complete. <sighs> I was naive to believe it would never get that far again. Naive and stupid. But do you see now? This is the reason why I train so hard. Why I always try to control my emotions, no matter what people do or say to me. This creature inside me. It's always on the hunt. And the only way I can keep it at bay is by controlling both my body and spirit 100% just one moment of carelessness. That's all it takes. In the way that I know of, at least. Who should I ask? The apothecary? Neither way helps me, and who knows what the Order would do if they found out. Especially as strained as the situation is right now. <laughs> well, what would be the alternative? Transcribe Pyrian books like the Magisters do all day? Or drop out entirely and pour hot water for the Upper City's noblewomen? Look, Saira, as you've already pointed out, there is a chance that this thing inside me is responsible for the massacre in the village. And if that's true, I definitely have a lot of repentance to do, don't you think? And even if it isn't. I want to change things. To make the world at least a little bit better. And yes, I do realize that this means a lot of hardship and hard work for me. But I'm not afraid of that. Do you know why? Because that's what's missing in this world. So many people just talk, talk, talk and never act because that would mean that they'd have to actually endure something for what they believe in. Yes, I know. I... Sorry, I shouldn't have gotten so emotional. I just wanted to clear this up. Anyway, the one thing I ask of you is to keep silent about what I've told you. I'd like some time by myself now. And thanks for listening. You. I don't want to be nosy, but is it true you were inside the memories of a dead Pyrian? That's incredible. Yeah, it doesn't make sense.
an out. What are you doing in this part of the city? Shouldn't you? This is too dangerous, whatever they want here. If we send spies and they get caught, Nerim will see this as a provocation. Poor, poor people. All they did was invade the country, and look how ruthless we are, sending spies in order to find out why they're here. We should be ashamed. Save the sarcasm. We both know what I mean. You know my opinion, Teela. You know my opinion, Teela. consider it. You come at the right time, Prophetess. Commander, explain the situation. Of course, Grandmaster. Yesterday, we received word from one of our outposts in Duneville. One of the fishermen there saw warships anchoring on an island some miles from shore. And they bear the Niramese flag. We have already sent scouts to confirm this, and it is true. The Niramese have invaded our land. We have a suspicion. I suppose you know that the civil war in Nerim has ended two months ago. And who won it? The combined forces of the Northern and the Middle Realm, led by Taranor Korek of Kavait. Now Nerim has been united under the banner of the free people of Nerim. How they like to call themselves. And this could be the reason for these warships. Because of this Korek. It is said that he helped Narathzul Arantheal shortly before the Lightborn were slain. And while before that, he was an opportunist who changed his ideals as often as his underpants, it seems that his crusade with Narathzul converted him, so to speak. He has become a declared enemy of religion. He also thinks of the death of the gods as the first step of many. And now he sees it his task to rid Vin of religion once and for all. Free the world from the scourge of faith. These are his words. 
Though it is worth mentioning that his understanding of freeing includes mass executions and the burning down of temples. He's a fanatic, and worse, his men worship him for it. What he wants is to found a new world, and his free people of Nerim are supposed to be vanguard of it. Well, with the small but subtle difference that it was Narazul's vision to restore the human right of self-determination, and not to obliterate every kind of superstition or spirituality. It is plain stupid to believe a way of thinking can be beaten out of someone's head with just enough violence. The only thing that does is radicalize. Though a world without religion would be a better one, that's without doubt. Nonsense. The people need a higher power that guides them. You can see what chaos the death of the Lightborn brought on the world, and without your orders doing, all this would never have happened. Of course. Where were we? Korek. What Korek doesn't understand is that we're doing this to prevent a crisis. That is the problem. Pigast? We believe that Korak already knows about the cycle and the cleansing. And that he, how should I put it, wants it to happen. Well, I know how strange this sounds, but in a way it makes sense. For him, Inderal as the home of the Holy Order is the epitome of ignorance and stagnation. And we suppose he even knows that we are fighting these high ones. But in his eyes, everything a paragon of the Old Order tries to prevent from happening must be something good. Maybe he even sees the High Ones as prophets of his new era. Who knows? Fanatics are unpredictable. Right now, this is only an assumption, but we have to know. Right now, this is only an ass- Yes. Do you know what a silver plate is? Good. Then you know that they possess the power to transfer sound from one plate to the other. Our plan is to place two of the plates in their camp. That way, we can sound them out without risk. You, Firespark, and the mercenary, Dalvarek. However, you cannot travel to the island by ship. That would be too conspicuous. We found out that the Pyreans had some kind of underground transporting system. Under trains, that's what they called them. These trains connected the most important regions of the realm with each other, and thus probably also the temple on the island where Korax ships set anchor. If we can manage to find one of these trains, we could use them to get right to his camp. And, as it happens, we have information about a Pyrian temple in the Crystal Forest. One that is still intact enough for us to find a way into one of these trains. The Living Temple. That's how you call it, yes. But enough of the chit-chat. First of all, we need to find the gem that is used to open the gate of the temple. And I have a guess where we could find it. A village called Fogville, not far from the Whisperwood. As soon as possible. Joseph the mercenary has already traveled to Fogville, and you should do the same. I will meet you there. So we are talking about accomplished facts, or what? It is the only way. I'm sorry, Natara. Prophetess, I'm counting on you. Find out why Korak is here. Now look at that. It's the prodigy.
much to do, so little time. Yes. Walk less, my lady. Sure. Where to? Walk blessed. Where are you headed? 